Welcome to the VEX Robotics Competition Referee Training Videos, designed for both referees and teams. This is Chapter 6, Disqualifications, Disablements, and Match Affecting. Throughout the VEX Robotics Competition Manual, there are a series of rules that call for disqualifications or disablements. This video will talk about how to properly handle and enforce these situations. First, let's talk about the differences between disqualifications and disablements. A disqualification, or DQ, is when a team or alliance is disqualified from a match due to a rules violation. A team that is disqualified receives an automatic loss for the match. That is, they receive zero win points, autonomous points, and strength of schedule points towards their rankings. In the elimination rounds, the entire alliance receives an automatic loss for the match, not just a single team. DQs are only issued after a match has ended. It should never be issued during a match. If you see an offense that you think deserves a DQ, make a mental note of the situation and then discuss it with all of the rest for your field after the match, allowing the head referee to make the final call. A disablement is when a team is no longer allowed to control its robot for the remainder of a match because of a rules violation. A team which is disabled will be asked to place their controllers on the ground. Unlike a disqualification, disablements do occur during the match. Disablements are rare, but since they can occur due to a safety violation, it's important to be assertive and responsive when you identify that a disablement is needed. Remember that the rules which warrant disablements do not always warrant disqualifications, and vice versa. That is, a team that has been disqualified is not necessarily disabled during the match. In keeping these two situations straight, never ask a DQ team to set down their controls because the DQ happens after the match. Just remember, disablements are issued during a match, DQs are issued after the match. There is one important rule this year that could result in a disablement, S1. If at any time the robot operation or team actions are deemed unsafe or have damaged the field elements or cubes, the offending team may be disabled and or disqualified at the discretion of the referees. Strategic, intentional, or repeated violations of this rule could be considered a violation of G1 and result in disqualification at the head referee's discretion. Now, let's talk about disqualifications in some more detail. Once the head referee makes the final decision to DQ a team, they need to explain the DQ in detail to the offending team. This is important as the team needs to know what they've done wrong so that they can take corrective actions to make sure it doesn't happen again. If a DQ happens in an elimination round, make sure to explain the ruling to the entire alliance because the whole alliance is DQ'd when a violation occurs in the elimination rounds. You may also want to explain the situation to the opposing alliance since they may be awarded an automatic win. Lastly, when possible, the head ref should also explain the ruling to the announcer so he or she can explain what happened to the audience in a respectful manner when it is appropriate. Because of the sheer number of rule applications that can lead to referees issuing a DQ, refs and teams might think that there would be or should be a lot of DQs issued. Actual DQ rulings are rather rare because of the concept of match affecting that gets applied to these rules. When it comes to issuing a DQ after a match for a rules violation during on-field play, the violation must be match affecting. The DQ is only issued after the refs confer and decide that the violation has affected the outcome of the match. It must have changed who won and who lost. Any lesser violation of these rules is considered to be a minor violation and should result in the head ref issuing a warning to the team or teams in question about their infraction. That said, if the same team has already received multiple repeated warnings for the same violation, then referees may issue a DQ at their discretion. Again, this is rare and the vast majority of related rulings will result in non-match affecting warnings. Now, VRC Tower Takeover has an important way that DQs are handled in the rankings. As mentioned earlier, a team which receives a disqualification is awarded zero win points. However, because of this match affecting philosophy, it's very likely that the action which caused the DQ resulted in a loss for their opponents. That said, if the team receiving the disqualification is on the winning alliance, then teams on the opposing alliance who are not also disqualified will receive two win points. Essentially, they will receive a win for the match. Let's look at an example. In this match, Blue Robot 1 has decided to remove a cube from the opposing alliance tower. 
When the match ended, the Blue Alliance won by one point. This action clearly caused the Blue Alliance to get this win. If the cube had stayed in place, the Red Alliance would have won the match. So, because of this, Blue Robot 1 gets a DQ and receives zero win points. Effectively, they lose the match. Both Red Robots receive two win points, since they would have won if Blue hadn't violated these rules. So effectively, they receive a win for the match. If this was a qualification match, Blue Robot 2 would also receive two win points, since it would be unfair to penalize a team for the actions of their randomly paired partner. However, if this was an elimination match, the entire Blue Alliance would be DQ'd, receive a loss for the match, and be eliminated from the best of one tournament. One final note, referees should record all DQs and warnings in the head referee match anomaly log. This way, you can easily refer back to the incident in case there are any questions later in the day. Even if you're using tablets for scoring, referees should still keep a hard copy of the match anomaly log on hand. Remember, DQs and disablements should only be assigned in very specific situations. That's all for Chapter 6. Thanks for watching, and be sure to check out the other chapters in this referee training series on various refereeing issues.